If you have Pectus Excavatum, you've probably googled how to fix Pectus with exercise, only to be bombarded with conflicting advice. Trust me, I've been there. One video tells you to just hit the bench press, another website shows in some fancy exercises like the plate press that do absolutely nothing. And then there are the miracle workouts, claiming they'll completely fix your Pectus overnight. Sounds familiar, but what exercises do really work? Before I rank the 23 famous Pectus exercises I see recommended, let's first cut through the confusion and see if science has an answer about the big question. Can exercise actually fix pectus excavatum? The answer is in a 2005 study by Stuart Yeet King, a senior physiotherapist in a Hong Kong hospital. Published in the Journal of Pediatric Respirology and Critical Care, it reveals five key findings. Number one, other than surgical intervention, exercise is another treatment alternative. Clinically, a number of patients were observed to benefit from exercise, although the long-term effect and its physiological benefits are still unknown. Number two, the above exercises help correct the depressed chest wall deformity and also the the thoracic kyphosis. Number 3. Performance of the above exercises will see immediate elevation of the chest wall. Number 4. With an increase in strength and muscle tone by training, the chest wall deformity may be diminished or at least maintained. Number 5. The increase in intensity of training, especially to the interior chest wall, may help to build up larger muscle bulk and a better cosmetic outlook. This study reveals that not only some exercises can build muscle to make your sunken chest less obvious, but they may also push the breastbone and ribs out, improving posture and enhancing rhythm. In this video, I'll rank 23 popular pectus exercises from S tier, super, to F tier, fail. These rankings are based on science and not bro science. For ranking, we'll be using the findings from this study, which also outlines the 5 essential steps for improving the chest wall appearance with exercise and plenty of other relevant latest studies in sports science on muscle growth. And no, I'm not wasting your time with fancy gym machines you don't have any access to. You'll be able to do this with minimal equipment even at home. Unfortunately, most people waste their time doing the wrong exercises, making their pectus even worse. To rank these exercises, here are the 5 criteria from the study. Number 1. To increase the mobility and flexibility of the spine and chest wall. Latest studies show that loading the muscle in a lengthened position leads to a better muscle growth. For optimal results, exercises should stretch the muscle while keeping it under tension in its lengthened position, promoting maximal flexibility and growth. Number 2. To lengthen any tighten and shorten structures. Ideally, the exercise should be done as a lengthened partial rest which would be perfect for pectus and have been shown to be more effective than full range of motion. You'll be using all your energy in the most hypertrophic phase of the exercise. Number 3. To strengthen muscles in elevating and expanding the depressed chest wall. This means the exercise must specifically target chest function, meaning it should focus on transverse seduction and flexion, bringing the arms together, rather than relying on secondary muscles like the front delts. The movement should also be easy to progress, meaning you can consistently add weight or reps each week. Number 4. To restore or normal posture. Research now shows that some lifts stretch the muscles almost as effectively as static stretching, highlighting how lifting and stretching are more connected than we once thought. Number 5. Training of the pectoralis major, especially the sternocostal fibers, will be of utmost importance. Because of that, all 22 exercises will mostly target the chest, not the back muscles. Now, let's quickly break down the pectus excavator anatomy and why some exercises can help. As you know, it's a condition where your ribs and sternum grow inward, forming a hole in the chest. This affects the front of the chest, not the back. Building the muscles around your pectus is most effective in making your pectus less noticeable. Also, we need to get familiar with the basics of the chest muscles and their functions. One of the biggest misconceptions in the pectus community is the idea of an inner chest muscle that can be specifically trained to fill in the dent. The truth is, there is no separate inner chest muscle, other than the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. The pectoralis major is the primary chest muscle and has two heads, clavicular head or upper chest and sternal head lower chest. The clavicular head contributes to shoulder flexion, transverse seduction and internal rotation and helps create a broader, fuller chest that masks pectus. The sternal head has a role in shoulder adduction, scapular depression and shoulder extension and that's mass lower on the chest for a balanced look. The pectoralis minor is located underneath the pectoralis major and doesn't directly contribute to chest size but plays a key role in scapular movement that is protraction pushing the shoulder blades forward and depression pulling the shoulder blades down. Strong scapular control improves your poor pectus posture. Weak or tight muscles in this area can cause shoulder rounding and chest sinking. By developing the entire chest with the best exercises, you will have a fuller chest and not noticeable pectus. In addition, we also need to know that there are inspiratory muscles that help us expand our chest when we breathe in. Unfortunately, these muscles alone can't add force and elevate the lower sternum and sunken ribs. Their effect is limited and can only pull your upper chest. However, if your arms are supported by grabbing a chair, table, loaded by 
barbell or dumbbell, the sternal origin of the pectoralis major muscles can also assist with the chest wall elevation. Researchers say that we need to pay most attention to the pectoralis major, as it's a powerful muscle with fibers inserted into the lateral lip of the bicipital groove of the humerus. If the arm is stretched and fixed upward, these origins can directly and forcibly pull the sunken sternum and ribs up during muscle contraction. The concept of reverse origin and insertion applies. The direction of pull from the stretched arm position along the sternocostal fibers of the pectoralis major acts effectively on the depressed chest wall. Now that we covered the science, anatomy and reasoning behind these exercises, let's finally get to the fun part, the ranking. We'll start with the best pectus exercise there is, the dumbbell fly. This is hands down the best exercise for pectus excavatum. It's pure shoulder horizontal adduction, the primary function of the pec major. And that's exactly what we need to target the sternocostal fibers of the pec major. The dumbbell fly works wonders by stretching the chest to its fullest, and that's where the resistance peaks, and the chest muscles are under maximum tension, which science says is ideal. This also makes it perfect for length and partial reps, which are more effective for muscle growth compared to doing it full range of motion. A huge benefit here is that unlike machines or cables, dumbbell flies don't lose resistance in the stretched position. You can really feel the sunken chest expanding as you hold that stretch at the bottom. To make it even more goaded for pectus, add a yoga block or a foam roller under your back, as it gives you unlimited stretch and targets the pectoralis major more effectively. This exercise should be at the top of your list, S tier for sure. Barbell Bench Press The Barbell Bench Press is the most famous pectus chest exercise, and for a good reason. It's highly loadable, can progressively overload weakly, and is effective for building the chest. It primarily targets the pectoralis major, focusing on shoulder horizontal adduction and shoulder flexion for upper pec engagement. However, the biggest downside is that it doesn't stretch the chest perfectly. The range of motion is limited, since the rep ends when the bar touches your chest, whereas most people could achieve a greater horizontal adduction stretch. Additionally, the Barbell Bench Press can take a while to load up, which wastes time. Since it's a compound movement, it trains the entire push musculature. But there's always a chance that your triceps or front delts fatigue first before your chest. Because of these drawbacks, it's a good but not ideal exercise for pectus excavatum. B tier. Close Grip Bench Press Closer grip allows for a greater chest stretch compared to the traditional bench press. However, to maximize pec activation while minimizing triceps and front delt involvement, you need to ensure that the bar touches higher on your chest. Narrower grips typically emphasize the triceps. It's a solid choice, but not the absolute best. Low A tier Wide Grip Bench Press Widening your grip shifts more emphasis to the pecs by reducing front delt and triceps involvement. However, this also slightly reduces the stretch on the pecs. It can feel uncomfortable for some lifters and lacks the range of motion benefits seen in other variations. Plus, it's not very friendly for partial lengthened reps, especially without a spotter. Still a decent option. B tier. Guillotine Bench Press The guillotine bench press provides the best pec stretch among all barbell pressing variations. By touching higher on your chest, it shifts emphasis away from the front delts and triceps. However, it comes with a major downside. It's potentially unsafe, especially for the shoulders. The risk of injury is high, and if the barbell falls, it can be very dangerous. That said, if performed with proper technique and caution, it can be highly effective for chest development. Due to safety concerns, it's not a top tier choice. High B tier Incline Barbell Bench Press A study from Brazil compared flat and 45 degree incline bench press and found that both were equally effective for lower chest growth but the incline bench press was superior for upper chest development. Since many people with pectus excavatum struggle with upper chest growth, the incline press is an essential exercise for improving appearance and creating a broader, fuller chest. Upper chest growth also contributes to the illusion of broader shoulders. This makes the incline bench press a top tier choice. High A tier Barbell Floor Press While it retains some benefits of the standard bench press, the Barbell Floor Press lacks a proper chest stretch. It also requires a lot of setup time and can be embarrassing if you fail a rep without a spotter. Since it doesn't contribute significantly to pec growth compared to other pressing variations, it's not a great pec to option. Low C tier Decline Barbell Bench Press I've never been a fan of the decline bench press. It feels awkward, mostly because it can make you feel dizzy as you lay on a decline, especially for us with pectus excavatum. Additionally, lower chest development is already well covered through standard bench pressing, making this exercise unnecessary. The range of motion is poor, however, it's still slightly better than the floor press since it provides some stretch. C tier Dumbbell Side Press This exercise gets the pectoralis major fully contracted, but it's done in a shortened position. While it can help build strength, the movement is more awkward, and because of the range of motion, it doesn't stretch the chest or focus on the key areas needed to elevate the depressed chest wall. There are better alternatives out there for chest development and improving pectus appearance. D tier Low to Bottom Dumbbell Fly 
Another exercise that should be avoided if you're aiming to improve your pectus excavatum. You don't feel a good stretch or any significant engagement of the chest muscles. The movement feels more like a front raise and that takes the focus away from the chest. This exercise is ineffective for chest growth and should be replaced by better options. F tier. Pull over. If you are looking for an exercise that targets the ribcage expansion and can help you with pectus excavatum, the pullover is an absolute game changer. This exercise is excellent for the lats, but it also gives you an amazing stretch to the chest and serratus anterior muscles, which can help expand the ribcage. To modify it for pectus and maximize the stretch, make sure to drop your hips low during the movement, take deep breaths and focus on stretching your chest and lats. This helps not only with chest development, but also with the ribcage expansion, which is one of the most beneficial effects for people with pectus excavatum. That is may not show full chest activation during this exercise, but you'll definitely feel like your chest is pushing out, which is exactly what we are looking for. Arnold himself included this in his list of essential chest exercises. So who am I to disagree? The pullover is a fantastic S tier exercise for correcting pectus appearance and should definitely be included in your routine. S tier. Ab will rollout. When it comes to building core strength for pectus excavatum, the ab will rollout is one of the best exercises you can do. The ab will hits the core hard, especially in the lengthened position, which is where the muscle growth is most effective. As you roll out, you'll feel your lats, shoulders and forearms working, but the stretch in the core and chest is what makes this a powerful exercise for pectus. Also, it's a similar motion as the dumbbell pullover and core plank. By targeting the core with this movement, you also improve your posture, which can help you with your appearance of pectus excavatum. Plus, the ab wheel is inexpensive and easy to use. It's a great S tier exercise that should be a part of your pectus excavatum routine. S tier. Dumbbell incline bench press. Even though I'm a barbell guy, I love dumbbells for pectus excavatum training because they allow for a greater range of motion, enhance the stretch and enable safe lengthened partials and safe drop sets. It's easy to overload progressively, provides a superior stretch compared to the barbell pressing, especially when angling the dumbbells at 45 degrees and is more time efficient. Additionally, it's safer without a spotter since you can drop the dumbbells. But overall, it's an elite pectus exercise. S tier. Flat dumbbell bench press. While still a great chest exercise, I personally find the flat dumbbell press a bit awkward, especially when getting the weights into position as they get heavier. It's harder to control compared to the incline variation and lowering the dumbbells down can feel awkward. Despite that, it still provides a better stretch than the barbell bench press and is excellent chest builder. A tier. Single arm dumbbell bench press. I've seen people attempt single arm dumbbell pressing, but in my experience, it's unstable and awkward. It takes more time to complete each set and doesn't provide any unique benefits of a regular dumbbell pressing as many think. Additionally, it forces your core to work harder to resist rotation, which has no direct benefit for pec growth. If you want a stronger core, it's far more effective to just do core isolation exercises instead. I'd only use this if I had access to just one dumbbell. Sit here. Dumbbell decline press. This exercise feels a natural, poor chest stretch and an awkward setup. Blood rushes to your head, making it even less practical. This one is entirely unnecessary. D tier. Standing plate press. This is hands down the worst pectus exercise. Gravity acts downwards, while the pecs produce force perpendicular to the resistance, meaning there is absolutely no tension on the chest. The only muscle being worked here is the front delts, which are already overdeveloped if you do other presses. Completely ineffective. F tier. Push-ups. They are foundational for all lifters and often the first exercise recommended for pectus excavatum. They require no equipment, can be overloaded by adding reps or a weighted backpack and also engage their serratus anterior which can help with the pectus posture. However, they eventually become too easy, making progressive overload difficult. They also lack an adequate chest stretch which limits their effectiveness. B tier. Deficit push-ups. Deficit push-ups are an incredible, underrated chest builder. This is my favorite pectus exercise at the moment. Elevating your hands increases the range of motion, allowing for a super deep chest stretch. Putting a backpack and some plates makes this even more effective and time efficient. This movement improves the push-up significantly by making it harder, increasing pec stretch and enhancing overall muscle engagement. I love doing them when I don't have the time to set up the England bench press. Ever since I started doing them, I saw amazing pec gains. You can even do lengthened partials to failure safely. S tier. Dips. They are a challenging but highly effective chest builder. They offer a deep unlimited loaded stretch which is crucial for pec growth. Additionally, they can be progressed by adding weight. The only downside is that dips can be tough on the shoulders, especially for those with poor pectus posture. But they remain one of the best pectus chest exercises. Just a simple tip for pectus is to try to push the sunken breastbone forward, not down. This is done so your pectus posture doesn't cave in more and to give you that pleasant chest pushing out sensation. S tier. 
single arm dumbbell fly. As you can see, single arm movements are not ideal for pectus excavatum and are overrated. Isolating one side at a time doesn't provide any significant benefits as many think, and it's difficult to balance on the bench. You won't be able to lift as much weight and won't feel as deep of a stretch as you just use two dumbbells. This is also an inefficient use of time. Sit here. Bend flies. Bend flies may seem like a convenient option, especially if you're working out at home, but they are not as effective for muscle growth as some of the other exercises. The problem is that the resistance in bend exercises tends to be weaker in the lengthened position and stronger in the shortened position, which isn't optimal for hypertrophy. We need the most resistance when the muscle is stretched to get the best growth. Additionally, the time it takes to set up the bends isn't always worth the result. If you're just looking for a home workout option, they're fine, but for maximum chest growth, there are better exercises to focus on. See tier Bent press. The bent press is a decent option if you are training at home and don't have access to weights. Unlike traditional bench presses, the resistance increases as you press forward, which means the hardest part of the movement happens when your arms are fully extended. This isn't ideal for maximizing chest hypertrophy. However, it does provide consistent tension and can still be useful for endurance and muscle activation. It's not the best option for pectus excavatum correction, but it's not the worst either. B tier. Alright, so those are the 23 pectus excavatum exercises ranked from S tier to F tier, all backed by science to help improve your sunken chest appearance, pectus posture and even help you pull the breastbone out.